Okay, hello everybody. We are now live. Um, if you can see me, please put a comment in the comment section and say yes, I see you. If you have a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, if you can see all of us, give us a thumbs up. And as usual, you know what we do when we go live, rep your city, where you're watching from. I see the comments coming in already. Thank you so much for everyone who has been able to join in. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Okay, I see a number of comments. Let me see. I can see the chats. I can see the comments coming in, people saying greetings. Mackenzie, Heather, can you guys see the comments? Can you see the people saying hello? Yes. yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'm just checking to be sure that I'm not missing anything. I'm not missing any comments. Okay, great to have you here, everybody. Um, let me officially say welcome to all of you who have been able to join this live stream today. If it's your first time here, you know who I am. My name is Marina. Um, we all are in Saskatchewan, Canada. We live in Saskatoon, where I just share videos about my experiences as a Nigerian who has been living here five years now. Okay, so in today's video, guys, in today's live stream, like you can see, I'm not alone. Uh, yes, I see the comments coming in. People are watching from different places, different countries. I see Mexico. I see Nigeria. I see... Wow. Okay, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate everyone who has been able to join in. So as you can see today, I'm not alone. I have two gorgeous women who are joining me today, and we're going to be having conversations around how newcomers to Saskatoon can get settlement support. I know that a large part of my audience are Saskatchewan bound. Some of you are Saskatoon bound. I get those emails all the time. And Especially in these unprecedented times, I don't think it will be out of place for you to get information on how your life can be easier when you land in Saskatoon. And that's what we're going to be having um, around the conversations here today. Watching from Guyana. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So without talking too much, I'm going to hand this over now to Heather. Or be, we're going to start with Heather uh, for you to introduce yourself, tell us what you do. But before that, please, let's have the land acknowledgement. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us, Marina. We're so happy to be here today and to see everyone from all over the world. So cool. Um, so my name is Heather Finley. My pronouns are she and her, and I work at the Saskatchewan Intercultural Association. Um, I'd like to start off today to begin with a land acknowledgement. Um, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional lands referring, referred to as Treaty 6 territory and that the city of Saskatoon and all the people here are beneficiaries of this peace and friendship treaty. Treaty 6 encompasses the traditional territories of numerous First Nations, including the Cree, the Diné, the Nakoda, the Soto, the Ojibwe, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are dedicated to ensuring that the spirit of reconciliation in Treaty 6 is honored and respected. This acknowledgement also reaffirms our relationship with one another. Okay, so I'm gonna start off today with um, talking about SIA. Um, so the Saskatchewan Intercultural Association um, is an organization, a settlement or a social impact and settlement organization in Saskatoon. Um, we've been around for a long time. Our values are respect, compassion, trust, inclusion, and kinship. Our vision is building an equitable community where everyone has equity and equality. Um, that accepts and celebrates all cultures from all around the world. Our mission is to promote an intercultural understanding and the retention of cultural identity and language to fully include both newcomers to Canada as well as Indigenous people in Canadian society. Um, so SIA has many different departments. 
Um, so we have uh, employment department, which we're kind of known for around the city of Saskatoon. We have some wonderful programs in our employment department. Um, so we have the PACT program. So this program is just for women. Um, it's called, it's PACT stands for Professional Advancement and Career Training. So this is a program that um, works with women who have degrees or education or work experience in finance, accounting, engineering, and IT services. We also have a light program, which is learning interculturalism through employment. We also have a mentorship program, which works with both men and women, um, with business professionals to give them a training portion as well as a work placement to get them both Canadian work experience and um, work references. Because many newcomers come to Canada and they don't have any Canadian references to put on their resume. So this is very, very important. Um, we also have the mentorship program, which is both for, oh, sorry, that's the one I just went over. And we have E for E, which is education, or sorry, em, um, English for employment. And then we have a career net program, which is virtual employment training. And that comes with professional mentoring. Um, it also comes with use of our employment counselors. So at SIA, we just, about six months ago, added employment counselors to our employment program. So this has been awesome because so many people, even if they don't want to take the programs, but still need support with their um, Canadian resumes or Canadian cover letters or learning how to do the job search in Canada. Mm -hmm. This is very important for them. Um, so those are, that's roughly our employment programs. We have a huge employment department. Um, we also have wonderful youth programs for the kids. So this is really important um, when you want your children to have a sense of community, right? Because it's really hard for kids to move to a new country where there's a different culture and languages and traditions. Um, so we have three main programs in our youth, um, our Connected Summer Program, which is, um, it's a program during the summer. So when you're at work and you don't have childcare, you can apply to our summer program and your kids can meet other newcomers that have the same barriers and struggles. And, you know, they have that feeling of connectedness yeah. um, during the Winter months, while your kids are in school, we have the Connected Pathways program. And this is a program that's really good. So on PD days, when your kids don't have school, but you still have to go to work. Work, yeah. Yeah, you can <laughs> sign up for this. Days. <laughs> yeah, you can sign up for this program. And then you don't have to worry about your kids. They're having fun. They're playing soccer. They're doing art stuff. The last um, culture, the last culture club we had, um, you know, they made teepees. We had an elder come in from the indigenous community and they learned how to make teepees and learned oh. history. And I'm a volunteer for that program and I'm a soccer coach. So I taught the kids soccer and my daughter came and helped me too. Um, we have so much fun in our youth programming. It's always so much fun. That's amazing. I'm not, it sounds I, so like I'm I can imagine a lot of the things you're saying because a lot of them now, because I've been here, I can relate to so many of them. But to take you um a little back to um talking about the programs that are available for newcomers, I'll let you speak a little more about that in a bit. But um uh, let's go to Mackenzie real quick. Mackenzie, if you would please introduce yourself and tell me a little about what you do and the programs that SODS offers. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so hello everyone. So good to be here. Thank you, Marina, for hosting us on this wonderful platform that you have. So 
Um, my name is Mackenzie and I work with Saskatoon Open Door Society as the zone coordinator, which we will touch on a bit what that means um, a bit later. So Saskatoon Open Door Society has been in operation for about 40 years now. We have over 200 employees um, that are always willing to help out at, at any way that they can. We have many, many different departments. So we have um, trying to remember them all. <laughs> Heather did such a good job with all the specific programs. Um, we have the employment uh, program and settlement department. Is, um, so we're similar to what Heather was saying. We get, you know, you get uh, specific employee, employee training. Um, if you're new to Saskatoon and you're hoping to gain skills, um, there's many various programs within that, you know, helping to gain that Canadian experience, working on your resume, um, trying to find work is obviously very difficult when you're in a new city. So we have people trained and willing to help out with that. Um, as well as the general settlement counselors. So that's who you'll connect with first when you're with uh, Open Door Society and they will give a general needs assessment. What do you need? How can they refer you and get you help? And they're kind of your one-stop shop, go-to for everything, refer you to all the other various programs we have within Open Door. Um, we have childcare uh, and youth services. So again, similar to SIA, we have a variety of different summer programs for youth, um, stuff throughout the winter. And then we have many different daycares as well. So I believe we have two or three different locations um, for daycares for newcomers. So a uh, very great opportunity for those kids that are all experiencing the same challenges moving to a new city. Um, we have other, we have language and translation services, uh, which is lovely if you need interpreters. Um, many other different organizations call us and ask for interpreters for their newcomers. Um, and we have a variety of different community programs and events that are just happening always throughout. I know Marina was um, a host for one of the big events that we just recently had in the winter, the Threads event, cultural conversations, which is lovely. Um, different community programs, cultural bridging um, with, with other communities and other cultures. Um, and yeah, last but not least, we have the local engagement and volunteering uh, program or section uh, as well. So. If you're a newcomer and you're looking to get engaged uh, in the community um, and maybe give back to your new community, you can volunteer and we can connect you uh, with a variety of different organizations. You can volunteer within Open Door. Um, many, many staff at, at Open Door actually used to volunteer um, and are newcomers themselves through that program. So that's always lovely. Um, yeah, again, we have over 200 employees, many different departments and units, and we're all very excited and willing to help out uh, on our mission on you know getting newcomers to become participating members of our community. Absolutely, um, like getting yeah. newcomers. I, I imagine that journey coming from the anxiety and the confusion of being a newcomer to becoming a participating member of the community. Mm -hmm. I think I now qualify. Can I say I qualify <laughs> to be? <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there's, there's something that both of you said that kind of really resonates with me. And this is something I try to share a lot on my channel when I tell people that um, immigration is tough on children. It is tough on kids, especially with teenagers who, regardless of where you are, still struggle with self-identity, self-worth and things like that. And then you throw in a new country for some people's a new language that's thrown into the mix like that can be a lot. So I'm happy uh, for all of you who follow my channel. You have heard me say that before. You can't really relate. I hope now that you hear the professionals who are helping newcomers settling say this over and over again. It will drive home the point that it's not just the adults. More than half the time, the children also can struggle with things like this. And thankfully, we have organizations like uh, SIA and Open Door Society that make these transitions seamless for us. I am a firm believer in look for the resources that you need. Whatever you're doing, ask questions, read. If their resources are available to you, take advantage of them. I have, I'm the self acclaimed um, Saskatoon Open Door Society, Saskatchewan Intercultural um, Association town crier. Like, I will scream, I will point you. Like, for those of you who email me, you know, it's almost like I have a default response. I'm new in Saskatchewan or I'm new in Saskatoon. Where do I start? Open Door Society, go there. They're going to direct you to SIA and to the many other places where you can get the help that you need. So I'm happy that we can all hear this straight from the horse's mouth. OK, um, Heather, I'm going to come back to you um, now. So with all these programs, if I were a newcomer in Saskatoon, like how do I 
connect? How do I, how does this actually help me as a newcomer settle into um, life in Saskatoon? How do the programs really help? Okay, well, oftentimes when newcomers come to Canada, they face many barriers. So our Mackenzie and myself, our job is to help them with these barriers. So they can come to us and we can help them with many things. We can help them with things like education, employment, housing, legal, legal struggles. Uh, many of our newcomers are afraid to go to the police, right? So um, for example, a previous client had a bike stolen and she wanted to report it, but but because of the relationship in the country she was from with the police, she had um, worries and stress. So we, we do that. We help them with things like that. Um, we can help them with legal concerns. You know, we have partnerships with other nonprofit organizations like Classic, which offers free legal advice. Um, if we have amazing link classes at SIA, that, those are our language classes. Um, they have free childcare and um, free parking. They're close to transit. They're all over town, so they're very accessible. Mackenzie and I um, can meet our clients at those locations, so we eliminate the barriers of transportation. Um, we, we can help with basically anything, health, if they need a family physician. Um, we can help them with getting a job. We can help them with... Um, child care. Basically, if they're having even a problem, like a difficulty with their landlord or um, doing their citizenship form, basically anything that they have a problem with, we can help them. We can either give them resources, we can give them referrals. We also do follow-ups to make sure that they're not getting lost in the system because so often they'll get help for one thing but they'll need support in so many other things. Yeah. So we try and, and take a holistic approach when we're offering the zone settlement services so that we make sure that we can meet all the needs so that people can be as successful as they can in Canada because both Mackenzie and I are so passionate about that. Oh, that's amazing that people get help for things like up to trouble with landlord or not being able to report to the police. Like I'm thinking about that now, I'm like, you never really know how some of these things can interfere with how you settle into a new country until you have to do it. Like if you already have trust issues with the police where you're coming from, I totally see how you'd rather not report it than go back to the police because, wow, that's, that's really amazing that um, services like that are available. Um, so Mackenzie, I'm going to come to you now. Um, you, t you mentioned um, earlier when you were introducing yourself, you talked about zone coordination and you were going to come back to it. So would you like to tell us what that is and uh, what is the process? How can new summers, newcomers get support through zone coordination? Yeah, for sure. So Heather and I are both the zone coordinators for our, our organizations. And so uh, what that project is, it's a relatively new uh, new project. And it came about as we're finding that there are many newcomers in Saskatoon, that many eligible newcomers that could receive tons of support, as we mentioned many times now, um, all the various supports we can offer them. But for whatever reason, they're not reaching out for those services. So we, we want to help them and we want to see them become successful in the community and help them out uh, with that. But when they're not reaching out and they're not uh, registering for our organizations, you know, we're finding that there's there's many people that that just aren't. And that could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe they don't know about us. It's a new city. Of course, that's very overwhelming. I imagine coming to a new a new community. There's all these different resources and you're not even sure where to begin. Maybe they don't know that everything that we offer is free for these different uh, newcomers. Um, so, and also, yeah, so typically it's it's expected that when they come to Saskatoon, that they register and they reach out. Um, but so what, as zone coordinators, what we're trying to do is take a more of an outreach approach and go to them. So we're doing that through um, a variety of different ways. We're kind of figuring it out as we go. And so we're connecting with different, you know, local ethnocultural organizations or faith-based organizations and trying to go to where the newcomers are. So that way that process is a little more streamlined for them and a little less daunting and um, trying to help them out um, the best we can through that. So 
Um, the reason why there's two different organizations here, we have Heather from uh, Intercultural Association and myself, of course, from Open Door Society. And that's because um, they tasked us to work together on this initiative, uh, which is great because then we have you know, more resources um, and we can reach out throughout the city and, and kind of spread out a little bit more. So we do that by, by zone, which is the zone coordinator, that's where that comes in. And so Heather has half the city and I have half the city and it's split up uh, by postal codes. So uh, the process is if, you know, we're trying to reach out, we're trying to spread the word, you get to know our faces and what we offer. Um, you can connect with us directly or you can register there at Open Door um, or SIA. And then Heather and I will look into that and say, OK, what where is their postal code? Where are they located within the city? And then based on that zone that you're in, one of us will will contact you and then uh, refer you out as needed from there. So again, it's more of an outreach approach. Um, so if you're a newcomer that's already in Saskatoon and, and hasn't haven't uh, gotten settlement support um, from anywhere else or haven't registered, then you know we're trying to again be the friendly face, offer you everything here. You can come to us and we can help you along that that process there. Or if you're an organization, we are very excited and happy to partner with you and work with you in order to, you know, provide different information sessions, um, you know, work with work with you. And if maybe you have connections to newcomers where we don't, then we want to go into to your community and help you out on your mission as well. And so that's kind of the zone coordinator project. It's very exciting. Um, it's a lot of outreach. Um, a lot of different partnerships are being made. So that's awesome. So. We're very happy for anyone to reach out to us. That's great. And I think in the course of answering the question, you answer the question that's on the screen, is this at any cost oh, yes. to the newcomers? No, so all, all of our services for eligible newcomers um, are free. So if you register, if you're an eligible newcomer, which I think Heather will talk next about who is eligible, because of course many people don't even know that, um, they, can, they can get these services all for free. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's there's so amazing. many things that are available that if you just register and reach out, then we're happy to put you in the right direction. Yeah, I like the sound of free. For yeah. a newcomer, <laughs> free is very important because every sure. cent counts. Okay, so over to you now, Heather. Would you like to tell us like who is eligible? Can who is considered a newcomer? Who's eligible for these services? Like, I mean, I've been here five years. If I decide, uh, you know, I think I could use some help. Can I still assess any of these services? Or is there a time limit after which? I no longer become eligible or I'm no longer considered a newcomer who's eligible for these services? Yes. So um, I guess it depends if you're a Canadian citizen, if you've gotten your citizenship. If you have gotten your citizenship, um, you're not eligible for zone settlement coordination services. Oh. <laughs> I know it's a bummer. But anyone who's permanent resident, so men, women, any CLB level, um, children, adults, seniors, any age, as long as you're a permanent resident, you are eligible for our services. Um, new people who have just come to Canada are eligible for our services, or people who have been here for three, five, seven years who aren't Canadian citizens who haven't accessed services, um, they're eligible for our services, as well as people not just in Saskatoon, it, in the surrounding areas. You know, there's many newcomers in our rural areas, um, like the little towns around Saskatoon, who aren't getting the support they need. Um, if you know of any of those newcomers, send them to us. We can help them virtually, online, through Zoom, phone calls, emails, you know, we can help them with all of that. Another thing that I'm just going to add a bit to Mackenzie's um, last topic. Another thing that we do is um, after we initially do the intake of the client, we also refer them to IWS to a NARS assessment. So this is really important because when they go to IWS, they get a whole assessment of all of their needs together. And then IWS will refer them to uh, the different organizations for the exact programs that they're eligible for, that they need to be successful in Canada. 
for okay. programs for their Heather, kids. if you will just speak one minute, what does IWS mean? Um, International Women of Saskatoon. Okay, okay. Yeah, and so they have a NARS, which is, um, it's a NARS assessment. So they do a basic holistic assessment of all of the needs that the client has or the family has. Um, and then they help, they give the referrals to the different organizations. And then those organizations can t contact the client. So this is how we're all kind of working together in Saskatoon to make sure that no newcomers fall between the cracks. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I think it kind of brings us, uh, you spoke a bit about this, but if, um, either of you would like to speak a little more about the question on the screen just says what are the specific job related services or the I think that's amount amount of services that both both organizations provide for newcomers are there I, I think I have an idea where this question is coming from because the job search is one of the biggest concerns of newcomers so what are the specific services that are related to finding a job, getting settled into the Canadian workplace, if either of you would like to take a stab at that. Yes, so Mackenzie um, at SODS and SIA both have employment services. Um, you know, at SIA, I went over a few of them in the beginning. We have programs that are employment programs that you do um, an in-class training prepare a Canadian resume, prepare a cover letter, get all of the job search techniques. And then we actually place the client in a work placement. So they're getting the Canadian work experience. They're getting the Canadian references. And then oftentimes they find them a job. Some of our programs, like the LIGHT program, Learning Interculturalism Through Employment, they actually pay you to take their training. So, um, Actually, I just signed up a client yesterday for it. So now she's going to be in the training for, I think it's eight weeks of in-class training. And then she's placed in a job um, as a work placement in her field. Um, and she gets paid for it. She gets paid for the training, the in-class portion, the work placement. And then after that, she'll most likely, most of our, I think 80% of our clients actually get a job after that. So um, these are beneficial. We also, if, if people don't want to come and take our programs, we have amazing employment counselors. And they'll help you from intake to you get a job. They do follow-ups. Um, Mackenzie and I can also follow along. If you're our client, we do follow-ups just to make sure that you're getting the support you need and you're successful. Mackenzie, can you talk about some of the programs that saw it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we have also a very similar uh, employment unit as well. So as Heather mentioned, we have one-on-one -on -one career counseling. So similar to the settlement counselors, they'll help you, as Heather said, you know, from the beginning to the end to, you know, help you become successful and finding, finding work in your new community. Um, we have, I'm just looking at the website here, which we can throw up as well. Um, we have many um, like classroom-based programs. So of course, the language is a huge Oh, I'm hearing an echo. Um, the language is a barrier for people to get work. Um, so we have many, you know, English for employment uh, classes, classroom-based programs where you can learn English um, in kind of more unemployment specific in a way. Um, yeah, employment training for that, basic life skills and entry-level employment skills. Um, yeah, many different skills-based based training as well as they help you with cover letters, resumes, and all that, and then getting you connected with, with where is hiring, of course, because that's obviously daunting to find out where do I even look for work? Where do I go from work? And of course, many people coming here, you know, have worked in their fields for many, many years. So how can we, how can we best ensure that you're going to get, um, you know, work in your field? So many different programs. Yeah, that's amazing. And for the people asking, I have put the link to both the organizations in the chat box. So if you will just scroll up and look out for my comments, I have one of them on the screen right now. I have that on the screen. So you can check that out. Um, and yeah, the information you need, you will definitely find there. You know, um, yeah, I, I can totally relate to that part of being able to find a job in your field. So in the organization I work with, we had somebody recently who 
um, came to do like a placement for a period of time and she was from SI. I could, the joy that I felt when she said, oh, I'm doing this placement through SI, it made me so happy just knowing that, not because she was Nigerian, that's not the only reason why, just saying. <laughs> it made me so happy that um, this program still are helping newcomers settle into the workplace and if that person could get that experience in her field for that duration of time it just gives some kind of leverage like guys and that's why and that's why these sessions are important we're not just here to talk about these things just to excite people these are resources that are actually available for you to access like all of these services for free you can actually have an employment counselor look through your resume, ascertain what the needs will be and recommend you for the training that puts you in a competitive position so that you can fit into the Canadian workplace. Like, can anything be easier than that? If you can get help with, um, with your landlord, we're renting a place, we're find, finding a family physician. I'm searching for a family physician, by the way. I know I'm not eligible, but I'm just putting it out there to the universe. <laughs> If you can get help with all of these things, guys, really, that's technically what you need to make your life easy. So I don't, what, what's the, what's the feedback? Like, what do you get back from the people who have gone through these processes? Like Heather, for instance, when you deal with these clients, they assess the services and they're able to now um, find their feet in Canada. Like, do you get feedback from them? Like, do you follow up like years later just to find out how people are doing? Like, what does that feedback look like? Yes. We do. We get a lot of feedback and it's very positive. And there's nothing um, better than talking to a client who, when you first met, was really struggling. And then they're finally, you know, after maybe six months or a year of follow ups and and continuous support, they're finally where they want to be. Um, I have a, actually a story I'd like to share. If that's OK. Cool. Sure. So <laughs> I had a client who came to me. And she was, you know, new to Canada, very, um, her confident lev confidence level was low. In the country she was from, she was a professor at a university. And she came to me because she was struggling financially and also with her mental health um, because of not working, because of that feeling of um, she just had no confidence. So she came to me wanting to work, wanting to get a job at Tim Hortons. And when I looked at her previous work experience and education experience, I said, is that what you want to do? And she said, well, no, but I have to start at the bottom. And I said, but you have all of this valuable experience. Like, we can use this in Canada. And she, her self-esteem was so low, she didn't think. She thought because her English level wasn't the same as people who have lived in Canada their whole life that that her education wasn't valuable. So anyways, we we ended up applying for the Saskatoon Public Schools and instead of applying for Tim Hortons and Wendy's and those places, I encouraged her to apply at Saskatoon Public Schools and I helped her throughout the um throughout the whole process when they do the interviews and all of that. And she ended up getting a job with them. And now she works in Saskatoon Public Schools. Oh, Her amazing. confidence level has gone like a lot higher. Even when she walks in oh. to see you, she just has this like glow and she's it's so definitely. proud. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and there's nothing better than that. Like oh. that's, that's why Mackenzie and I are here, right? It's that's to help such people. a beautiful story, beautiful. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's that's common where you have professionals, like you have people who are like dentists and pharmacists driving cabs and delivering pizza. And for a start, for like a means to an end, that's not bad. But there are too many people who are stuck in jobs like that because they don't know how. And I yeah. know how it is. Like the longer you stay on the doors, the more difficult it becomes to get out of it. So, yeah, oh, that's such a beautiful story. Just knowing that people have these success stories is that's amazing okay Mackenzie so how can people find you like what what do I do I'm a newcomer in uh Saskatoon how can I assess the services can I just walk into any of the offices do I have to book an appointment or how how can I find you yeah that's a very valid question I've actually noticed a few of those questions so I'm glad we're going to touch on that um so uh, Marina put up I think yeah, a couple times um, on on our online registrations for our website. So 
again, as I, yeah, there you go, just quick. <laughs> as I mentioned uh, before, you can go on this, if you're in Saskatoon or you're coming to Saskatoon and you're wanting to register with one of our organizations, you can fill out this online registration form. And then at the bottom, it'll say, you know, how did you hear about Open Door Society? And then there's um, actually something you can select through a zone coordinator. And so if you select that, it's important because that means we will then get that information, your information, and then we can follow up with you directly. Um, and then, you know, if we need to refer you out or um, to IWS or where, whatever that may look like, we will then take the necessary steps. Um, yeah, and then SIA, I believe, is a similar one. They have the online registration as well, specific to the zone coordination. Um, yeah, you mentioned, can we just walk into the office? So pre-COVID <laughs> times, of course, we have to mention COVID. Um, that's, that's you could, thing, actually. <laughs> yeah. So pre-COVID, you you totally could just walk in. Uh, we have a lovely front desk staff that are there to greet you and welcome you, and you ask your questions or who you're there for, and they'll gladly help you out. Um, and it's a little bit different now with COVID, um, so it's it's uh, not necessarily encouraged to just walk in. We need to have an appointment, so you can just call our front desk there. So. If you just look at Saskatoon Open Door Society uh, website, contact information, um, they'll just be the main number there. And then, of course, same with SIA, you can just call. And then, you know, say if you're calling based on this video, that would be great. <laughs> you say, hey, I watched this awesome live. Um, I'm interested in, in registering or getting, getting settlement support. May I speak to the zone coordinator? And then they'll you know put you over to me um or heather if you're calling sia and then we'll we'll contact you from there um okay. so, so yeah again just call us um we we hope that post covid times uh, that's the dream that we can have a more um you know open doors I mean, it's called open. <laughs> <laughs> all no our fingers are crossed we cannot yes. wait to be able to say it's finally post covid oh you know? that, yes, and speaking wait. of speaking of covid do you find that um the services you have been able to offer are limited by COVID? Like, how do you find that COVID is impacting the services? Yeah, Heather and I are both shaking our heads. No, I think both organizations, we did a really, I mean, all settlement or organizations in Saskatoon did a really, really good job of adapting immediately, right away, because, you know, we can't just not provide these services. These are essential services to newcomers that we want to provide and we want to help out. So um, very, very quickly, we, we all adapted to a virtual, virtual method. So um, everyone, when we were working at home, settlement counselors, they would call you. We'd have Zoom meetings. Zoom, of course, we're all well aware of Zoom now. Um, and all, a lot of our programs that happened in person just switched to a virtual method. So, you know, I ran a few um, Welcome to Canada programs, which was all over Zoom. And it, it worked well. I mean. You know, we of course hope one day that we can all be in person again together for all these programs and that's coming up soon, we hope. But yeah, if COVID, COVID didn't stop us <laughs> and the work that we did, that's for sure. Oh, that's we just amazing. had to do it a different way. <laughs> that's great to hear. So with these programs that are offered, are there like particular, um, is there like a particular schedule of when each program starts or it becomes a, as you come, your, your, your process begins as you come, or is there like a schedule you guys follow that people have to work with? So to for SIA, um, I'm not sure about SODs, but I think it's relatively the same. Um, our programs have certain intake sessions. So for example, our light program just started. Um, our PACT program is starting next week. So our next intake for light is September, but they start all through the year. So you have numerous times a year to take these programs. Mm -hmm. Also, um, our employment counselors are have an intake all the time. So they're always taking clients. So if you're ever looking for a job that you can't get into a program at SIA or SODS, um, you can come see our employment counselors. I think SODS has them too, I'm not sure, but which are a continual intake. I also want to um, just mention one of our other new programs that just started. It's in our Intercultural Education and Anti-Racism Services program. Um, it's called the, 
cultural exchange program. So it's amazing. Actually, I'm a volunteer for this too. So they set up um, a new client, someone who's new to Canada or newer to Canada. So we have clients that have been here a month and clients that have been here three years. And so my mentee, so I'm a mentor, so you can be a mentor if you've lived in Canada longer than five years. So I'm a mentor and I'm mentoring a, a lady from Nigeria who's only been here a month or I guess two months now because I've been mentoring her for a month. And we're going to be friends forever. Like, we love each other's kids. Like, Sounds like Nigerian Jalof has a role to play there. <laughs> yes, yes. And she is amazing. So, like, the the program coordinator just paired us perfectly because we love each other. The program's done in a few weeks, but we're going to be friends forever, for sure. So, um, yeah, so it's an amazing program for newcomers because this, their mentor can help them with employment. Like there, it's their own personal person who can give them, like help them network, help them show them things. Like we've already gone shopping at Value Village. We've gone, I've helped her move. We've gone, like we've done so, she had me doing like physical labor. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. But so this program is so good for both people who have lived in Canada over five years as well as newcomers because you make friendships that last a lifetime. You you learn so much about each other and it's it's just such an amazing program. Like she'll she'll text me at like eight in the morning, what kind of milk do I buy for my kids? Or where can I get this? Or and we talk all day some days. Like it's it's amazing. So that's a really that's called the culture exchange program and it's it's new but it's amazing for anyone that's new to Saskatoon. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, for the viewers, if you have any questions, please um, you can leave the questions in the chat and I would pop them up to the screen for um, Heather and Mackenzie to speak to. Um, Heather, I know you mentioned at the beginning that this is for permanent residents. How does that work for people who are here on like work permits, who are temporary residents, like this person who's going to be a student in the U of R? I know this is U of R, which is already in Regina, but for international yeah. students in Saskatoon, would that apply? Are they able to? Um, you know, I've had clients that come to see me who are work permits, but I just refer them to IWS because our programs don't deal with work per permits. We actually do have um, our mentorship program. So we do have a few programs that do work with uh, clients that are work permits, but okay. they're not... Um, they're we're not funded for them to receive our services. Okay. Um, but fair we enough. can we can show them the way to go for sure. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um for Abayomi, because you're in Regina, you're in a different um different city in Saskatchewan. This is for Saskatoon. Um as an international student, you might want to consider reaching out to like the admissions office in your school. They typically have programs like that that help international students settle in. I know that for the U of S, there's like the International Students um, Center where you can go to get some of this kind of services. So you want to check what the equivalent is offered in Regina is because this is um, a little more Saskatoon specific. It will most likely not extend to Regina. So that's something for you to take note of. Um, I'm just scrolling through the chat just to be also, sure we're not. There was a question about housing. Okay, um, okay. Was, oh yeah, this one. Yeah, so we, we can totally help you with housing. Um, there's some really great resources in Saskatoon for low-income housing. Um, we're partnered with a program that is called North Parade Development. So they what they do is you rent from them, and then they take a certain amount of your rent every month for three years and put it in a bank account for you. And then at the end of the three years, you can use that money for a down payment for a house. And wow. they have a special newcomer subsidy that they add. If you're a newcomer, they add $3,000 to it. So this is a really good um, partnership with them. And, you know, the rent, the only thing, though, is the rent is a little bit higher, but you're still, um, it's still an investment. So if you think, 
I want to buy a house someday, but how am I going to put enough money aside to, to come up with the down payment? This is a great opportunity to do that. We also have um, partnerships with really low um, income housing and affordable housing. We also can refer them to subsidized programs. There's employment subsidized programs for housing. There's, there's a bunch of different ones. So if you connect with Mackenzie or I, we can refer you to that. There was also a question about schools, um, registering your children for schools. Again, Mackenzie, both Mackenzie and I can help you with those. I'll touch on that as well. Um, the We have the uh, settlement workers in schools program as well. So that is specifically meant for to help um, children get registered in school. So um, either you, when you reach out to us and that's what you're looking for immediately, if you're you're really new here, of course, that's a, that's a really quick thing you need to do is get your children in, uh, registered in school. Then the Swiss workers can help you out with that immediately. There's also the Newcomer Student Center at the Saskatoon Public and Catholic School Divisions um, that help you out and work directly with the uh, Swiss team as well. So all that is definitely handled. <laughs> That is amazing. Like my mouth is still open. Like what? What did I hear about this three years ago? I know I know some <laughs> of the things are relatively new, but this is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God. Wow. Okay. So uh, this question says, are there pathways, opportunities for healthcare workers like doctors, nurses, and pharmacists to integrate into, um, into life here? Like, mm. do we have any specific um, pathways for healthcare workers? That's a, yeah, that's a good question. And maybe Heather can answer more specifically, but um, I don't know specifically for like pharmacists, nurses and whatnot, but I do know that, you know, part of the provincial nomination program, um, if you're, if that's how you're um, immigrating here, they'll ask you if you are, you know, a worker in one of these categories that we need. And of course we all need healthcare workers um, really, really bad um, and nurses and, and everything. So that'll definitely help your chances in that provincial nomination program. Um, yeah, Heather, do you have anything to add on that one? Actually, I have a really awesome success story for that one. Um, so I recently had a client from Iraq who came to Canada and um, he is a phlebotomist and he started working for a private um, business, got some Canadian experience working for a private company, and now he's working between St. Paul's Hospital and the University Hospital as a phlebotomist. Oh, Successful, amazing. he just, he saved up enough money to buy a house. He bought a house about a month ago. He's oh. just, yeah, so, so there's lots of opportunity here for that. That's amazing. Yeah. So speaking of opportunities here, like, most times people accuse me on my channel, like I am biased. I'm always talking about Saskatoon. I'm like, excuse me, that's where I live. I'm Saskatoon's town crier. <laughs> we need more content creators who can talk about their cities. But as long as I live here, I am going to talk about Saskatoon. I'm going to be talking about Saskatchewan. So maybe when people hear from you, it will make a lot more sense why more people should consider Saskatoon, Heather. And Mackenzie, please help me tell these people why Saskatoon. Like, what would you say are the opportunities here that make Saskatoon just the best place to be, as far as I'm concerned? Yeah, I mean, I I'm also biased. I love Saskatoon <laughs> as well. Um, I love I love how um, everything's so accessible. You know, of course, people when people think of opportunities. Um, they need to move to a bigger city. They need to go to the West Coast or Toronto or, or, you know, bigger cities like that. And that's how I used to think as well. You know, I did my university education out on the West Coast because, and I'm, I'm from Saskatchewan because I used to have that mindset as well as, oh, there's no opportunity here. And then I graduated, came back to Saskatoon to work because there's so much opportunity here and, and not only, you know, career opportunities, but also, you know, the work-life balance I find from having that experience of being in a big city versus Saskatoon that, mm -hmm. you know, the work-life balance here is just, is way better because, you know, you're not commuting, you're not spending an hour commuting to and from work. You know, Absolutely. the the river is just right over there. You can um, quickly go kayak right after work and you don't have to drive two hours out of the city to do so and be stuck in traffic. Um, I mean, yeah, I also just love Saskatoon. There's, of course, there's, for settlement wise, there's so many amazing 
settlement agencies and so many local, amazing local nonprofits. Um, and it's just that sense of community. I mean, when people think of like rural Saskatchewan, for example, or they think of, um, you know, often it's associated with that sense of community and belonging, which newcomers really need, of course. That's what they're looking for when they move to a new city and leave their community behind. Um, and we're known as the friend friendly people. So come on down. Oh yeah. I totally amen to friendly people. I totally agree <laughs> with that. Like the the ease at which I can get from point A to point B, like mm -hmm. priceless. For me, it's peace of mind over everything else. Honestly. Like if yeah. it's going to take me two hours to get to the high pain, high this job, like nah. Mm -hmm. I'd rather deal with something less if it can if it'll take me fifteen or twenty minutes to get there. Heather, yeah, you want to share why your yeah. wife Saskatoon? Oh, hold on a minute. Yes. Okay. Um, I've lived in Saskatoon my whole life and I love it here. And the thing I love the most about Saskatoon that's different than other places I've gone is the people. I love the people. Everyone's so friendly and kind. And, you know, when you're walking down the street downtown, people say hi to you. Um, like Mackenzie, I also love the river. Um, there's just so many beautiful places here and yeah, I just, I guess for me, it's the people and the beautiful scenery around Saskatoon too. There's so many beautiful places to go. Like, uh, we have Waska Sioux. We have so many beautiful lakes around Saskatoon. So there's just a lot to do and, and a lot of fun and great people. Yeah. Speaking of the lakes, I hope that I'm able to explore a lot more of the lakes this summer. Fingers crossed. I've put it out here. Now I have to do it. Oh, my God. I have oh some my God. fun places I can send you, Marina. Oh, yes. I'm <laughs> definitely going to be, <laughs> be reaching out for that. Okay. So this question that just came in. Do you guide immigrants with licensure programs for the people who need to take licensing exams? Is there any support that's available for them there? Yep. We do. Um, we've helped numerous clients get their licenses. I'm sure Sods has too. Yeah, yeah. With the um, Saskatchewan government insurance, the SGI, um, of course, it's a that's a big process to get your license. It's like a six step, I think, graduated driver's license program <laughs> that we all have to take. But for newcomers, they actually have a program where if um, you know, if you can prove that you've had your license for a certain amount of years in your home country, then the process is a lot more, um, you know, fast tracked and streamlined and you, you don't have to take as many of the exams or the, um, you know, the like you have to have your learners for a certain amount of months. That stuff is fast tracked for you. And we guide you on how to do that and how to go about um, yeah, getting that. That's and a lot of a lot of newcomers, I found that, you know, I've spoke to in my programs that's like one of the first things that they were able to do, which I was, I was always shocked because I mean, me getting my license in Saskatchewan starting at 15 years old, it's such a long process. But of course, if you've been driving for a number of years, then it should be fast tracked. So that's amazing. Um, Heather, would you like to speak about this? Is that room for volunteers? How long would one have stayed as a newcomer to, to be a volunteer? And I like this, like it's a newcomer who's already thinking about giving back to community. That's amazing. That That is amazing. I am a volunteer for three different organizations, actually four different organizations as well. So that's kind of a passion of mine. Um, yes, there's lots of room for volunteers. So sometimes we'll find um, people who volunteer with SIA and sometimes we'll refer them to other organizations looking for volunteers. So I recently had a client who's little brothers and sisters wanted to be in our youth program, but they wanted to be in it, but they were on the older age. So instead of being a participant of the program, they're going to come and volunteer and still mm -hmm. meet friends because we do have some older kids that are um, volunteers as well. So it wouldn't be fair to this um, person to come in as a participant if they're the people who they're going to have friendships with. We'll all be volunteering. So we do it like that. Um, we've also had some volunteers come through and volunteer in our link classes, um, like um, newcomers from countries with who's who has have English as their language, their main language. Um, they've come into our link classes to get volunteer experience. They've come into our C and C classes. Um, our C and C classes are our child care 
for our link classes. So we have our language classes um, that have childcare as well. Okay. So we have volunteers there. And if we don't have any volunteering opportunities in SIA, um, what we do is we refer them to other organizations um, like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, YWCA. There's lots of places. Read Saskatoon. There's a ton of places in Saskatoon looking for volunteers. That's awesome. awesome. Good job. That's amazing. Um, okay, so I've put the link to both organizations in the chat. So please just scroll through the chat. Maybe I can maybe I can copy that and put again. I can copy the link and put in the chat again. So if you register with these links, you can um, indicate that you heard about this through zone coordination, right, Mackenzie? Yeah, yeah. So on both, the, uh, you can select that specifically. Um, and again, these are registering for this specific organization. So if okay. you're in Saskatoon um, and you want to register to to get services from either SIA or or Open Door, um, then yeah, register, select zone coordination, um, which will then tell Come the supervisors that yeah that we okay. will then contact you. Okay. Um, and amazing. again, if you're if you just want to call, um, you know, say if you're not you're not in Saskatoon yet, um, and, or maybe you have more follow-up questions, you can just call our offices, the Saskatoon Open Door Society or SIA, just the main contact number and ask yeah. for one of the zone coordinators, and then we're happy to, to chat with you. And for the phone numbers, you can, it, it's available online. If you just Google Saskatoon Open Door Society, you'll be able to find mm -hmm. the main phone number and you can call and just ask for the service you need. Okay, so we're now coming to the end of our broadcast today. And uh, before I let both of you go, is there any last words you'd like to share? Just something you'd like people to know before we end this? Yeah, I mean, I'll just quickly reiterate. Um, again, if you are a newcomer, then again, of course, we're happy to contact or connect with you. But also, if you are an organization or if you have yourself, if you're not a newcomer, but you know of a family that's coming or um, an organization that works with newcomers, then again, we're really happy to be in touch with you because or get in touch with us because um, this whole zone zone coordination project, again, like I said, we're trying to do outreach. We're trying to create partnerships um, with as many different organizations as we can in the city in order to try to spread out and reach as many newcomers as we can and and help out um, as many people in the community. So if you're a newcomer uh, in Saskatoon or coming to Saskatoon, contact us, register if you're not already registered. And if you're an organization, give us a call um, and we'd love to chat. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for <laughs> Marina for having us. Um, I just wanna thank say you. that as well to end off like, that your platform is so incredible, what you do. And I've watched so many of your videos videos now, and I know many, many other people have, and you help. This is this is what our mission are, is as an organization, and you're, you're single-handedly doing that. So we're so, so uh, privileged and lucky to be on your channel. Oh, thank you. Uh, and thank, thank you so you. much, so. <laughs> thank you very much. I felt like that was me on the hot seat there, okay. <laughs> Over to you, Heather. Pardon? Um, is there any last thing you would like to share before we wrap this up? Um, no, one thing I forgot to mention um, about Saskatoon is we also have, um, uh, because we are on Treaty 6 territory, we have uh, a lot of Indigenous peoples in Saskatoon. So we also have some good programming for them to work with newcomers together. We have... Um, intercultural education and anti-racism services for anyone who's interested um, to learn more about um, intercultural or indigenous history, ceremony, anything like that. Um, and I also want to say thank you so much, Marina, for having us. This has been like so wonderful and so wonderful seeing all of your followers in the chat and all the questions and and just thank you so much for having us. Thank you, thank you so much. And to everybody else, um, I totally, totally would recommend the Indigenous um, history education that Heather just talked about. I am going to see, find a way to see how I can maybe assess that one or, or volunteer so I can learn <laughs> about that part because I think it's important for newcomers to be more interested in Indigenous history, just so that the impression that we have is not what is handed down by somebody else. 
because yeah. I know that I had those impressions handed down to me as well about indigenous people when I came in. And most times the impressions are not um, all that positive. It was until I started becoming curious and to learn more and to read by myself before I began to understand the reason why some of these things are the way they are. So I would say for newcomers, for those of, for, for people who are still relatively new in Saskatoon, it's something that I ask, please everybody learn about that because racism is not just about color. It's not just about color. Like for people who are, um, in, in profiles where it's like it's easy for you to be racially discriminated, indigenous people are in those boxes as well. And bef- yeah. the fact that the discrimination against them is not on the basis of color, it doesn't take away the fact that discrimination is going on there. So please let everybody just keep your hearts open, keep your mind open and learn as much as you can about the indigenous history. Thank you very much, Heather and Mackenzie, for gracing us with your presence today. And thank you, everyone who was able to join in. I totally appreciate your time. For all of you who had questions, I hope your questions were answered. We're going to be ending this here. And from time to time, we will do this more often. Just bring resource people to share information that will make your life easier. Your life settling into life in Saskatoon, settling into the workplace, settling into your children, settling into school, and just life starting your life in general, anything to make that process easy and very seamless. That's why we're here. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for watching this. Thank you for joining us. I would put the replay on my channel. For those of you who were not able to catch it from the beginning, you would have an option to watch the replay. Okay. Thank you everybody. Uh, Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. CST. Okay. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.